Hello everyone, my name is Sander van Duinhoven and I'm the scientific director of the IPA Europe site located in Os in the Netherlands. Thank you for joining this webisode of the IPA Collective Antibody Discovery Series. Today we will be focusing on developability profiling of early lead antibody candidate panels, leveraging our high throughput screening platforms. The overarching theme of this series is that our partners are seeking for truly unique antibodies that not only address the required mode of action for the intended indication, but the molecules must also be compatible and developable and free of liabilities associated with poor manufacturing and negative clinical outcomes. In this episode, we will touch on how IPA addresses antibody developability characteristics early on during an antibody discovery campaign. Our antibody screening and acetico platforms allow for high throughput developability profiling of lead antibody candidates and assess whether these antibodies show correct drug-like biophysical properties. Specifically, the lead antibody candidates are compared to a broad therapeutic antibody library to facilitate flagging of biophysical properties at risk. Early triaging of antibodies at risk could prevent failure and late stage development, which is associated with high costs a substantial time loss. Moreover, IPS developability profiling capabilities are of greater added value to guide molecular optimization of lead antibody candidates. IPA offers several in silico and in vitro analytical tools for developability profiling of a broad range of drug like properties. Silico analysis allows for very rapid characterization of large panels of antibodies ranging from the evaluation of biophysical properties to predict aggregation prone sequences, the identification of potential sequence liabilities, to immunogenicity prediction. These analysis allows for triaging of the input antibody panel, followed by recombinant production of the selected antibodies. Thereafter, the antibodies can be characterized for in vitro biophysical and biochemical properties, including aggregation, conformational stability, and hydrophobic and charge properties. Next, other methods allow for evaluating properties like polyreactivity and polyspecificity. Furthermore, our workflow allows for predictions regarding pharmacokinetic behavior as well as solubility. All these assays can be performed in a high throughput screening mode, making them ideally suited to incorporate early on during a clinical antibody discovery process. To score the drug-like properties of antibody candidates, we designed, expressed, and characterized the developability profile of a broad panel of clinical benchmark antibodies to set boundaries that would reflect proper drug-like behavior. This enables us to triage early antibody candidate panels based on correct biophysical properties. While our developability profiling is of high interest for early stage triaging of highly diverse antibody panels originating directly from antibody discovery campaigns, antibody panels from engineering approaches like humanization or affinity maturation programs benefit from such evaluation as well. Moreover, IPS developability screening platform is ideally suited to guide the de-risking of a lead antibody candidate. In this example, an antibody with a known non-favorable developability profile was subjected to an in silico molecular optimization. Aggregation prone residues were identified and highlighted, and in silico site-directed mutagenesis was applied to improve the developability profile. Selected engineered leads were recombinantly produced and studied for their drug-like properties. A final optimized lead showed full drug-like properties in various in silico and in vitro assays. While the parental antibody was identified as a poor behaving molecule from a developability perspective. The main takeaway from this episode is that broad high throughput developability profiling allows us to screen antibody panels very early on in the antibody discovery or engineering trajectories for drug-like properties thereby mitigating financial and time risks for clinical development. That brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you'll be joining us next time.